Hey everybody, welcome back to VA Education Series number four. Today we have myself, Justin Rushlow. We also have our Air Force veteran loan officer, Jerome Grabat. We also have our new loan officer, Matt Madrano, joining us. And today we're gonna to talk some um, frequently asked questions, misconceptions. Hey, what the heck is that in my VA loan? Let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and start it off. Matthew's got some questions for us from our uh, from some of our borrowers, some of our um, from some of our audience. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can address some of those questions. Sure. First question everybody has, what the heck's a funding fee? One fee that the, the VA charges to actually do these loans is what's called a funding fee. Um, not every person has a funding fee. Um, if you are a certain percentage disabled, then you are exempt from that funding fee. It's actually 10%. Um, so very low barrier to entry there. Depending on how much down payment you have, it could range from as low as you know half a percent, as high as 3.6%. So if you decide to go no money down and this is your fifth VA loan, it's gonna be 3.6% of the loan amount. So if you buy a $100,000 house, put no money down, 3.6% of your 100,000 is gonna equal 3,600 bucks. And, and that's the fee that the VA charges to do the loan and to make sure that they can guarantee it for that life of your loan. Follow up question to that that we get a lot and that I have here, can I finance the funding fee? Absolutely. I would say, <clears throat> I, I don't think I can think of one VA loan where my client decided they want to pay that VA funding fee up front. So typically what we do is we finance it into the loan. So if you're buying a house for, once again, let's use a $100,000 house for an example, and let's say your funding fee is $3,600, your total loan amount will probably be $103,600 the 100,000 plus the 3,600. Um, and that's totally fine for the VA. They're totally fine with that. Um, if you wanna pay that funding fee, that's great. More power to you. Um, but also with interest rates as low as they are, sometimes it just doesn't make sense to pay that money out of pocket to, to pay sure. those down. Sure. One big misconception that we have here is uh, we think we have borrowers who think they're only eligible for a VA loan if they're a retired veteran. So individuals have the ability to use the VA loan benefits if they're active duty, medically separated, retired, under cer certain characteristics of discharge. And we kind of talked about that uh, previously in our first video. And unfortunately, if a service member passes away, their spouse at that point has survivor benefits. And one of those is the ability to use a VA loan. Um, unfortunately, that does go away if they remarry. Um, but there are some details associated with that. So, of course, as, uh, as always, if you have any questions, reach out to your local VA representative um, or your local VA hospital, and they'll be able to help you guys out. Sure. Um, one other question we get is, what do I need to have filed or on record as I go into applying for a VA loan? What needs to be kind of on the back end? Uh, before I show up and, and what would prove my eligibility. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's also a good question. If you separate from the military, make sure that you do contact your VA representative and you submit as an extensive amount of paperwork. And a lot of individuals are taken back and they don't want to conquer that. However, in all reality, once you start it, it's pretty simple go through, finish your registration with the Veterans Administration VA and submit your service records, all your orders, all your medical records. And if you have any questions, re there's a lot of organizations that are there to help you out, completely voluntary. Um, one of them are the American Legion, you're the VSOs. Just reach out to your local VA representatives and they can help you out. But if you're not fully registered, when we go to pull your certificate of eligibility, it will come up blank, and then you will receive a phone call from your, your loan officer saying, hey, <laughs> let's finish this up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. Okay, one more here. How soon do I have to move into a house if I'm applying for a VA loan and I, I secure that loan? How soon do I have to move into that new property? The borrowers have up to 12 months or one year um, once they close on their loan to take actual ownership and residency of that property sure yeah sure. and their spouse could also fill that mm -hmm. fill that void so let's say you have a, a service member that's deployed 
right? And they have a spouse that's living here in the States and they purchased a property. Um, as long as somebody in that family is going to be living in the property, then that satisfies the residency um, obligation um, that they have. So um, that's a great question because that happens all the time. Oh yeah. All the time. Oh yeah. You know, that was a great question. Um, and, and those were a lot of great questions, misconceptions that we're very happy. And of course, there's obviously there's way, 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 way more questions that you may have or your realtor may have or you know your your third aunt you know way down the line may have about why you're not using your va loan or why you're having issues with it but if you have any questions as always please feel free to reach out to us um we are licensed in the states of kansas oklahoma and florida um, we can actively write loans there but if not we can get you connected to great lenders in those other states we can answer questions for you um, that are specific to your particular situation we'd be happy to help you out um, our websites and our um, information will all be linked in the description below so please feel free to reach out to us um, and stay tuned because next week we are going to start our non-qm series um, super excited about that is a brand new um, blooming field of the mortgage industry that just has a lot of misconceptions and questions people are like what the heck is non qm um so we're going to talk about that in as much gritty detail as you guys want and probably even a little bit more so um we're gonna dive into it but once again thank you guys so much for watching make sure to like comment and subscribe boom thanks so much guys have a great day